perish because of lack of knowledge. Now that version of the Bible says, where there is no vision, people perish. Two things that can bring about waste and perishing is lack of knowledge and absence of vision. But today we will be looking at the vision aspect of it and not the knowledge. In the book of Habakkuk, where we read, the prophet Habakkuk stood on the tower to question God and to ask God a few questions concerning certain events that he did not understand. Things were happening that were not part of how he had expected it to happen. So he decided to ask God, why these things are happening like this? Why are things going on this way and not this way? Why is it that the way I had thought it would have been is not like that? And now we hear the response that God gave to him. That is our focus for today's sermon. God's response to him. A lot of us seated here have this mind frame that you are what you are because of some manipulations of some people somewhere have gauged your destiny. Some people have uh, destroyed your life. Possibly that was how Habakkuk was feeling. Some of us sitting there felt that in 2012, if this person had made the contribution he should have made, maybe it would have been a better year. That was how Habakkuk felt. But now hear what God told him. God says, what you think is the problem is not what the problem is. The big problem is that you are living a life without a vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. I don't know why God is interested in allowing us to hear this message today in the first Sunday of the year. The vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Every life that is devoid of vision is not worth living. So I want to define vision. I have a few definitions for vision. One is a sight, mental sight. Or you could attribute vision to be a dream. It could be a revelation. Or it could be an oracle, a statement somebody has said concerning your life. These are what you can attribute vision to be. Now go to Habakkuk. I have shown you a vision of what I want to do. You know my mind, you know what I have planned concerning this thing. Yet you say you will sit at the tower and you will watch to hear what I will tell you. What else are you expecting me to tell you apart from what I have told you before? We have discussed this matter. So what are you expecting me to tell you again? This is where you missed it. First, write the vision. Write the vision. You want to sit on the tower to watch what I will tell you because the vision is not written. And because the vision is not written, at some point you forgot what I have discussed between concerning your life and your future. That's why you come back to me to ask questions. So from now, the vision will not be in your head. It should be written on the tablet. Write the vision on the tablet. I don't know what visions you have for 2013. It's not supposed to be in your head. It should be on the tablet. Write it in piece of paper, paste it everywhere. As everywhere your eyes can reach, write and paste it there. He now told him a second thing. He said, make it plain on tables. So that he that reads it can do what? Can run with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there are three first things we have to see about every vision that must give manifestation. One, it must be written. Two, it must be read. And three, you must run with it. Every vision you want to give manifestation must be written down. What you have planned for your life in 2013, write it down. Read it constantly. Read it. Keep reading and read. Read 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 and read. Do you know that was the secret of Joseph? Joseph always reminded his brethren 
In the dream, God told me that I was going to be ahead of him. He had it boldly written in his heart to the point that he was obsessed about the vision. And God told Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain. Let it be well understood by everybody. At a glance, if you had woken up from sleep, you can tell it. Between now and January, this is what I expect to achieve. February, this is what I expect to achieve. That's what God expects from everyone who is going to end up this day in celebration. It's not a matter of wishing. It's a matter of writing. Write the vision down. Write the vision down. So it's important for us to know that dreams are constantly to be re rehearsed. You rehearse your dream. Do you know that life is all about rehearsal? If you want to be a great man, you rehearse yourself into greatness. You don't wake up one day and become great. You practice it. What you have not written down, you cannot practice. So when you have written it down on the tablet and you have made it very clear, now God now says, you must run with that vision. That is where diligence now comes into play. That is where diligence now comes into play. I once read about a young man who had a mental picture of the kind of house he wanted to live in 20 years' time. He saw the picture. He took it and placed it on his wall. In his sitting room, he had it. In his kitchen, he had it. In his bedroom, he had it. A few years later, he observed that the house he was living in was the exact replica of the same house he had pasted on his walls after some years. After some years. People live their life without evidences to prove because the visions that you have, you have not written it down. When a man has a well-rehearsed vision, it guides you also on how you have to live your life. Obama knew that he was going to become the president of America. So from time in memory, he started guiding his life. Knowing that if he has certain dents to his personality, he cannot become the president of America. That's the essence of God saying, make the vision plain so that he that reads would understand. I don't know what your visions are for 2013, but three things you must do for me. Write the visions, read the visions constantly, then you must be ready to run with the visions. Then in verse 3, it now says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. That's another point where a lot of us miss it. Every man's life is attached to a time code. Your timing and my timing is not the same. Your speed and my speed is not the same. God's program for your life is different from God's program for my life. When you understand the timing of your life, two things it will do for you. You will stop.